Welcome to the Socialized Forecast, May 14th, 2024, the Tuesday edition where we bring the trends, social media updates, content ideas, and tutorials and more. I'm going to start off with a little rhyme this week, which will lead you to a trend, and I think it's a fun one. I'm looking for a positive trend. Fun times, just rhymes. Happy vibes, happy vibes, happy vibes. So this little trend is happening. It started with a woman talking about how she wanted to look for a guide in finance with a certain height, with blue eyes. She went crazy viral with it. It's to the tune of Like a G6. And even the guy who wrote Like a G6 has hopped on and come forward to say, hey, I'm the writer of this song. And I really am getting a kick out of what's happening with it. So it's good vibes. It's fun. It's meant all in good fun. And a lot of people are doing fun spinoffs of this, uh, men doing it about women, women doing it about women, men doing it about men. People, And I think you can take this much further and go into what you're looking for in, in life. So I just did that because I'm looking for a positive trend on TikTok, which right now I feel like I'm in a negative zone. And so I thought this morning, how am I going to find a positive trend? And I decided to write the little rhyme. So there you have it. The other thing that I will update you on for this week is I decided finally to answer the question, how do you know all this? Because a lot of times I get that question where people are, you know, like, how do you know all this? And I'll, I'll comment back and just say, oh, I do TV commercials for a living. But I decided to finally make a video and address it. And I want to say it's not the first time I've shared about my career, but I think it's the first time I've spoken about it in a way that was just a storytelling type of thing. And it was really, really interesting to see what happened with that video because I didn't expect it to get any attention at all since it's not a tutorial. And usually my tutorials are the ones that get more views. But what was really fun about it was that people stuck around to hear what I was saying. And I gave a little bit of my background. I also told a little story about an anecdote about my first experience in production. And so many people were like, you have been gatekeeping this information all this time, or I can't believe that we didn't know this about you before. And I want to say this, which I, hopefully you can relate to this, but I feel that my life on social media is somewhat of an open book. I mean, let's face it, I went through cancer on social media and I showed it in the raw stages. And I think, I think I presume that everybody knows what I do for a living. Now, I don't know maybe why they would know this, but I make videos behind the scenes of shoots. I make videos about things I'm doing in production. I talk freely about it on my lives. I think I even have made trends where I say what I do. And I'm just amazed at the amount of people watching my videos that don't know this about me. So it just brings me to the point where if you think your audience knows things about you that you might have even posted about many times over, you they might not. That That's what the learning is this week, at least for me. I was shocked. And now I have lots of questions about, can you show us your commercials? Can you show us how you troll a baton? All the things. And I just, I have so much potential content moving forward just from doing this one share. And the other thing I do want to explain is that when I do a story video, I don't just ramble without edits. I like to have my stories tightened up, which I also think helps engagement. So if you think you're just going to pick up your phone and tell your story and everyone's going to listen, there's there's points at which you pause or you add things that weren't really necessary in the story because you're trying to tell it in real time. And editing, editing, please edit it because you won't realize how long you drone on. And some people, maybe it's fine unedited and you'll have that rare time where something will go viral. But trust me, if you tighten up your content, I'm bumping my flowers, which are here from Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day belated everyone also to all the moms out there. But if you don't edit your content, you give it less of a chance of having better engagement. So you can say, okay, I'm just going to run with it. I don't have time to edit. Fine. Go right ahead. Do that. But there are times when editing will really take you over where it'll, somebody might be ready to scroll and then your next sentence really captures them. And if you, if you tighten up, get rid of those pauses and you keep the story moving, you have much better chance of going viral or at least having more engagement on your video. So I'm going to leave you with that and let's move on to the trends. Yippee. The first one is called the walk by. You're going to grab a friend for this fun trend because you want to do an intense walk by the camera, like staring down the camera and sharing and the music that you add in the titles will share why you and your friend or your coworker or your spouse or whatever are opposites, but still maybe like each other. 
So it's a really good fun one for people that have colleagues that you're trying to think of work content, but it's also fun for just basic, just friendships or relationships. So you can have a lot of fun with that one. The next one is so cute. And it's so cute because the one that we picked to share involves a golden retriever. And if you know Julie and myself, we we love a good golden retriever dog. <laughs> we love labs and goldens. So we just, I don't know, we're both sharing always back and forth these videos of dogs. So this one is, the audio is expensive, worth it. So this is so expensive to, something that's expensive to buy, but then it's worth it. The sound has been trending among pet owners to show off how adorable but expensive having a pet can be. But you can take this trend and do it with anything in your life. It can be something where you have a favorite face wash, you have a favorite lipstick, you have a favorite tea or coffee, and whatever it is that you feel that it's worth indulging on and why. So I think that's a really fun one for lots of different niches. So run with that one if you're feeling inspired. And the next one is you're on your own now. This one is helpful for graduates, but also can be used for anyone that's entering a new chapter or doing some, some type of transition in their life, a new job. It could be a change in your business, whatever it is. So it's a, it's a, it's kind of a graduation trend where it says you're on your own now. Like that's a, a scary thing. And then you're on your own now where it's an exciting thing. So the audio is fun. It just repeats the same sentiment twice. But the first time you're showing yourself maybe nervous about it. And the second time you're showing yourself excited about it. And hey, you can flip it. You can do it backwards and start with you're on your own now and you're excited. And then, oh no, you're on your own now. You're an adult and you're terrified. <laughs> so you can do whatever you want with that one. It's a lot of fun. And if you know a graduate, that you can really work with it too. All right. So before I go into the original content ideas, um, a reminder that we have a expert workshop coming up on May 21st at 5 p.m. Eastern time with Lorraine Laddish, who is an over 50 creator who actually just turned 60 this year. So she has a platform called Viva 50 that she started when she turned 50 and decided to go full time into creating. And I love the fact that she is someone more in my age zone that is making it work on social media as a full-time career. Because I find we see more of that among a younger audience, obviously, because social media is a very youth, young driven, at least it was before, prior. I like to hope and hope think to think that it's not now. But I do think that when we think of influencers, influencers, we always think of younger people. And that's why I think this whole thing happened when older people became influencers, they felt that they had to categorize them as grandfluencers, which to this day frustrates me because we're not calling them young fluencers. And now why are we being called like old fluencers? It doesn't really compute for me. And it's always been a, a bit of a bone of contention with me with the media uh, platforms that have put out that term. But anyway, I love the idea that a creator who is not in the 20s and 30s is really making a full-time living at this successfully. And she was ahead of the curve. She's been doing this for a while. It's been 10 years. I think she started in 2014 with her platform. So I'm very excited to talk to her, hear about her strategy, how she manages it daily. Does she still like it? Would she do it again if she was given the choice? I have a lot of questions for her and she's become a good friend. We've commented on each other's videos. We've messaged personally a lot. And I really love her energy. And plus, she's bilingual. So gosh, I wish I was bilingual enough to have the interview in Spanish, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> anyway, so sign up for that if you have any interest. We love to do this live so that we can get some questions in the chat. And then it gets posted as a podcast and as a workshop on the website. So you have two ways of seeing it after the fact. But joining live is fun because you can be involved in the chat. We take questions from the chat. And hearing it live, sometimes it spurs other things happening when people ask certain questions. So I love, I love the idea that we're doing these, quote, live podcasts, which are really workshops that we are turning into podcasts. Join us for that. It's going to be fun. Let's get into the original content ideas. Yippee. My favorite one is first, <laughs> I think. So this week, my family told me that I have a signature dance move and I did not know this. And I was like, what? So we made a little video that was just all in fun about them. I just filmed them to, and I said, I'm going to dance and we're going to film it. And you're going to tell me when I do the signature dance move. And sure enough, it was like in the first three seconds, I was, I guess, doing this thing with my hips. And they said, this is the Helen hips. <laughs> so funny. I'll tell, I'll be including that in the newsletter. So if you do get the newsletter, you can go find the link. 
But here's an idea that if you know someone in your life that has a signature dance move or a signature anything, you could, it doesn't have to be a dance move. It could be something they do that's quirky. It might be a fun one that you end up with a very relatable video. So if that person likes being, I won't say the butt of the joke, but oftentimes I don't mind being the one that's laughed at. I like to laugh at myself and I'm perfectly happy with that. So I never take insult. And it's a good thing because my daughter, Julie, is now doing stand-up comedy. And often I am the subject of her, a part of her, her bit, her gig. So there you go. Um, be a person that loves to laugh at yourself and then you can run with this one. Or and maybe you have someone in your life that is willing to be, to be featured. The next one is share your perfect day. This one is, is spurred by a dinner conversation that we had recently where we were talking about different topics that you can have that are conversation starters. And literally the th me and Julie and Steven were at dinner talking about this, thinking about what is your absolutely perfect day. And when I started to describe it, I realized my days, a lot of times are perfect because I do do the things that I enjoy when I'm in the city and I think of my perfect, for example, city day. So it was really kind of a cool thing to think about that maybe will bring you into being present in the days that you are creating now, where maybe you are creating a perfect day and you don't even realize that you're living it, or maybe it's not so hard for you to create a perfect day. So this is a good one for really deeper thought and getting into your mind space, but it could make a great piece of content if you're prompting your followers to engage with if, if any of those aspects that are in your perfect day might also be in theirs. Okay, the last idea is the summer bucket list. So it's the end of the school year, graduation's happening, summer vacations, all of that. Maybe it's time to make a summer bucket list. It's always nice to do things on screen with little check marks that pop up. So text always keeps people engaged. So maybe you're making your summer bucket list, but if maybe you're for a small business or a brand, you can make a bucket list on how people can incorporate your product or service into their bucket list for the summer. So flip it around, make it be about them, so you're not saying, here are all the good things my products do, but it's from the perspective of your customer. So flip around those things. So it's not like I, 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 we, 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 but it's more, you need this in your life, check mark for some, like a certain type of sunscreen if you're a skincare line or whatever. So flip things around, make them about your audience. All right, let's talk tutorials for the week. So Believe it or not, I banked up the tutorials ahead of time recently because I knew that I had wedding and then a client week big time. So I banked up my content and the two tutorials that were posted this week, number one, what was it? I can't remember. Oh yes, I revisited the overlay uh, tutorial because I wanted to make sure that people knew how to put things on the screen when they're talking. I had someone prompt it with a question. And when I see a question and it's a video I hadn't done for like a year, I tend to bring it back. And that is a good lesson right there that sometimes your followers are interested in something that you did and you think, oh, I did that already. Well, maybe you didn't do it for a year and now you have a whole bunch of new followers that might be interested in it. So you can remake the video. I did that. The other thing, I, I did a stop motion video for those who don't have the stop motion effect. And it's also helpful if you're on Instagram and you're not a poster on TikTok, so you're not uh, ha you don't have TikTok effects available. So I taught how to do stop motion very simply using the stop start method on your camera in your app. So you can do this on Instagram. You can do it on Facebook Reels, YouTube Shorts. You can create stop motion simply by tapping twice on your record button and then moving your products. Tap, tap, move your products. And I demonstrated it thought it was a really useful one because a, a lot of times when you try to do stop motion, then you have to edit. That editing takes a long time. So this makes it much more efficient. So check out the tutorials. And of course, check out the music suggestions. We are always providing some music for you. And I'm going to say that on Friday, I'm going to be hitting up a lot of questions. So if you have questions, make sure to submit them in the newsletter today on Tuesday for consideration on Friday. And then I will be hitting the answers, providing answers to a lot of those questions on Friday. That's it. Have a great week. Uh, my voice is coming back. I did go from wedding into a week of clients into another weekend where I had two weddings in a row. So it was wedding on Saturday, wedding on Sunday, which was Mother's Day. So it was a wedding. So it was a little Mother's Day gathering in the morning and then a wedding in the afternoon. So again, I'm hitting another week of where it's just intense exhaustion. But now I think I have a little bit of a lull and I can 
regroup. So I'll be seeing you on Friday and, and then we'll be getting ready for a nice relaxing weekend. I hope. <laughs> okay. Have a good one. Thanks for being here.